Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about arrays in C Sharp. A lot of times when we're writing programs in C Sharp, we're going to be dealing with all types of data. And a lot of times we're going to be dealing with large amounts of data. And one way that we can manage and keep track of the data in our programs is by using variables. But the one problem with variables is that they can only store a single value. So I can create a variable like an integer variable or a string variable, but I could only store one integer or one string inside of that variable container. And a lot of times if we're dealing with huge amounts of information, we're not going to want to have to create like hundreds or thousands of variables. So there's actually another container, another type of data structure that we can use in C sharp, which is called an array. And an array is basically a structure that allows us to hold multiple pieces of information in the same container. So unlike a variable that can only hold one value, an array can hold multiple values. So you could hold 10 or 100 or 1000 or even a million values inside of an array. So a good way to think of an array is just a collection of individual variables, right? So an array can hold like 20 different values that you would normally have to put inside of a variable. So I'm going to show you guys how we can create arrays. We'll talk about sort of the basics of using them and I'll kind of get you guys up to speed with using arrays in C sharp. So down here in my program, I'm going to go ahead and create an array. And remember, an array is just a container that can hold a bunch of pieces of information. So we create an array very similar to how we create a variable. The first thing we have to do is specify the type of information or the type of data that the array is going to hold. So we can use all the basic data types, string, int, double, boolean. We can use all those things. In our case, let's make an array of integers. So I'm just going to say int. And then I'm going to type a space. Now, whenever we're creating an array in C sharp, we always need to let C sharp know that. So the way that we can tell C sharp that we want to make a variable instead of an array is by making an open and closed square bracket. And that's going to signify that this is going to be an array. And then over here, I can type the name of the array that I want to create. So I can give this array a name. So why don't we just call this like lucky numbers. We'll create an array that's going to store a list of lucky numbers. In order to give this array some information, um, there's actually a couple of different ways we can assign values to arrays. I'm going to show you guys all the ways in this uh, tutorial. But the most basic way is to just make an open and closed curly bracket. And then inside of here, we can start typing out the values that we want to put inside of our array. So I can just start typing out some numbers and we'll be able to store them all in the same container. So over here, I'm just going to type like 4, 8, 15, 16, uh, 23, 42. So I'm just typing out a bunch of different integers. And you'll notice that I have one value here and then I separate it with a comma and then I can put another value. So all of these would be considered elements inside of the array. So I would say like four is the first element in the array. Eight is the second element in the array. And we can delineate the elements using these commas. And essentially now we have a container. We have this lucky numbers container, which is able to store all of these values. And this makes it really easy for us to manage and maintain large amounts of information. So, I mean, over here, I only have like maybe six numbers, but if I wanted, I could put hundreds or thousands or even millions of values inside of one of these arrays and they're extremely useful. So now that we looked at how we can create an array, let's talk about how we can access the individual elements inside of an array, right? Because this array is going to be no use to us unless we can actually get access to each of these values. So I'm going to show you guys how we can do that. And I'm just going to do a console.write line. So we'll just print out a particular value onto the screen. So if I want to access a particular value, I can just type out the name of the array. So in our case, lucky numbers. And then I want to make an open and closed square bracket. And inside of this square bracket, I want to give a number. So I'm basically going to specify the index of the element that I want to print out or the index of the element that I want to access. So let's say I wanted to access this element four right here. It's the first element in the array. I'm going to put a zero here. So this four element is at the zeroth position. It's at the zero index inside of the array. So now when I run my program, you'll see we're printing out four. So we're printing out that first element in the array. And so the way that we index these array elements is starting with zero. So if you've been following along with this course, you'll know that this is the same way we index strings. So I would say that four is at index position zero in the array. Eight is at index position one. 15 is at index position two. 
16 at 3, etc. So we start counting. In other words, we start the indexing at 0. So over here, I could say like lucky numbers 2. And now we're going to get 0, 1, 2. We're going to get this 15 back. So we'll be printing out that 15. You can see it over there. So essentially, when we access an element in the array like this, it's a lot like we're accessing a variable. And it's actually, you can think of each one of these elements in here as their own kind of separate variables. And you can do everything with them that you could do with normal variables. So another thing we could do would be to update one of these elements. So for example, if I wanted, I could go ahead and change one of the values over here. So let's say we wanted to change this element. We wanted to change eight. Well, I could actually just say lucky numbers and I'll make an open and close square bracket. I'm going to put the index of the element that I want to change. So this eight is going to be at index position one and I can give this a new value. So we could give this a value of like 900. Now, if I print out lucky numbers one, you'll see that the value will have updated. So now we get the value of 900 instead of just getting the value of eight. So I'm able to update these. I can really, you know, do anything that I could do with a normal variable with each one of these individual values. And that's pretty cool. So in addition to creating a, an array of integers, I could also create like an array of strings. So why don't we do that? I'm going to make an array of strings and I'm just going to call this friends. So this will be like a list of maybe my friends or something. And I'm going to show you guys another way that we can create an array like this. So um, you'll see up here right away, I was giving this array a bunch of values. So right off the bat, when I created it, I was populating this array with a bunch of information. But a lot of times when you create arrays in C sharp, you're not going to know exactly what elements you want to put inside of them. So if you don't know exactly what elements need to go in here up front, we can just create an empty array. So I could actually just say a string friends, and I'm just going to set this equal to new string. And then I'm going to type an open and close square bracket. And inside of these square brackets, I need to put a number. And this number is going to tell C sharp how many elements we want this array to be able to hold. So if we create an array like this and we don't give it elements like we did up here, we still need to tell C sharp how many elements this array can hold. We need to basically tell C sharp how big we want to make the array. So over here, if I put 10 like that, that means that this friends array is going to be able to hold 10 values. If I put three, that means the friends array is going to be able to hold three values. So why don't we put five and down here, what I can do is I can populate this array with information. So I could say like friends zero is equal to, and then I could type out the name of a friend. So I could say like Jim, and then I could do the same thing for the other one. So I could say like friends one is equal to Kelly, et cetera. So I could do that for each element inside of this array and individually populate it. And this is actually going to come in handy in a lot of situations. And as we go forward in the course, I'm going to show you guys um, how we can do something like that in a future tutorial. But for now, just know that this is another way that we can create an array. All right. So really, that is the basics of using arrays. Arrays are extremely simple, but they're extremely powerful. It's essentially just a type of container, much like a variable. But unlike a variable, it can store multiple pieces of information. And again, all of those pieces of information need to be of the same type, just like we have up here. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.